thank you both so much for coming on. Yes, of course. Thanks for having us. Yes, thank you. I'm I'm excited to talk with you both and also excited about how like open and willing to talk about vulnerable things you guys seem to be. Thank you. Yeah, I feel like there's a personally there's like no other way for me to it's just me being myself. I'm just like open. And yeah. Maybe I say too much, I feel like sometimes, but I feel like that's the way to be. Uh, Do you feel that way? Do you feel like you say too much? Sorry, we have this like super awkward cumbersome table that's I just kicked. I'm like, You're yeah, fine. I'm My laptop is literally on two shoe boxes. So. Same with ours. Okay. It's um, on a box. Say too much. I don't know. Maybe, maybe more my personal life. I feel like, hmm. um, yeah, but can you even say too much? You know? Yeah. I feel like th- I always feel like there's this interesting line between uh, vulnerability and openness and oversharing. And I feel like that's like a difficult line to navigate and one that I don't think the internet has been particularly helpful with. I feel like there's a lot of, a lot of, it's very easy to just overshare. And I think figuring out like the boundaries between what's the thing that I've really processed and thought through that I'm willing and comfortable sharing that's also vulnerable versus what's the thing that like I should probably spend three years working on in therapy and then circle back to the internet. Yeah, that's I a think- really great point. I feel like I, I overshared um, a mm-hmm. little bit too soon. Yeah, yeah. When, when problems that are like, come up in my life, I would speak about them before I really got to dissect them and, and figure out what they actually meant to me. Mm. It's a weird age that we're living in where you have this community that, that you converse with online yeah. and you, you can just talk to, but then the stuff that you put out also reaches other people that you're not meant to be sharing with. And so yes. all over oversharing becomes a thing. It's like you, you like jump to the end of a conversation with, with somebody that you're just starting one with, if that makes any sense. Completely. But I feel like that's kind of what a podcast is. Like you would, you, even just by like the title of your podcast or something, you kind of attract a group of people that hopefully want to listen to what you're saying. Yeah, yeah definitely. To listen as well. I mean, if you're speaking for like over an hour or so, like most podcasts are, I mean, a lot of people aren't just going to want to sit around for over an hour and hear what you have to say unless they really, their, their beliefs align with what you're talking about, which is. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like the the in general the the podcast audience is sort of more interested in a vulnerable longer conversation. They, they want something that's a little heartier, a little a little meatier. I think for sure. That's why I listen to podcasts. I feel like I've learned a lot through just listening to podcasts in the past two years of my life. But you guys are not doing yours anymore. Is that right? Yeah. 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 Why? What happened? I How long did you do it for? It kind of circles back to what you were saying before about like really making sure that we know ourselves before putting everything out. Huh. I realize I'm, I'm changing so rapidly in my life. As soon as I turn 21, for some reason, I'm like, okay, I need to be a full blown adult now. And I just feel like I can't do that overnight. Are you and both 21 now? We're both 21. Yeah. Okay. Got it. I'm turning 21 in December. So it's been some time, but yeah, I feel like I'm just, I'm really striving to mature myself and, and, think about the things that I'm really passionate about or that I want to change. Mm. And I just, I can't learn them all fast enough to, to be speaking about them on a weekly basis. I mean, that's mature in itself. That's like, that's wow. People could take a, take a lesson from, take a note from that. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah. I just feel like I, I spoke about so many things early on in the podcast. We, we were doing it for maybe a year. Yeah, yeah, we did audio only for a while. Mm-hmm. And that was more just like childhood stories and, and like goofy stories and stuff like that. But yeah. yeah, as we, as Ethan said, like we, we turned 21 and I don't know if it was just like the, the mark of like, now you're 21. And I just felt like I needed to like uphold this like adult. Yes. Yeah. You know what I, you know what I mean? I, like I wanted to be an adult and I wanted to, to change things that I saw that were problems and, and that I felt passionately about. But it takes so long to learn about all that stuff. Yeah, I was and running into the problem where we both were, where we like recorded an episode like a month and a half. Yeah. Prior, and then we were just like, hmm, I don't even know if we feel the same way anymore. Our, our values and views have changed since then. I don't, I don't really know if I want to put this out. So I felt like wow. we kind of keep chasing our tail with that unless we really took time to just find ourselves and figure out what we truly believed in. Mm. Was there anything that you guys felt like, oh God, I wish I hadn't, like any specific examples of things that you were like, oh no, shouldn't have done that. Yeah, yeah, like I think fifty percent of my online existence, I like, I I go to sleep at night think like don't, thinking twice about not 50% that percent of my like real life existence is yeah, how that goes for me. I think that's just normal like human behaviors to like 
question things that you've done and like yes. you feel a little bit cringed out by things that you're past all the time. And um, now we're living in an age where everything is kind of like permanent, yeah. permanent and it's on the, on the internet and um, it's out there. And, and it's not only you that, that, that thinks about it. other people have to view it. And so there's like another added pressure there. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, I think that what we're doing now is just taking time to really find ourselves because we did jump into to social media at 14 and wow. from the day I turned, maybe even before that, I was still making things like in hopes that I would become Vine famous or whatever. <laughs> but I was like putting myself out there from such a young age that uh, I never got to like just sit alone with myself and, and think about the things that I truly wanted for myself. Right. So where are you guys at with the internet? and all it entails now are you not post because i checked your youtube channel just i was like oh let me see what they're like posting recently nothing's been posted for six months right yeah it feels i thought it was longer than six months but probably not um i feel like since i put my phone down i honestly don't even use uh social media anymore like i don't i, I took a break from going on apps and wow and twitter yeah i watched the social dilemma and it was kind of like whoa um yeah for sure kind of like exiting social media or, or creating on social media and I guess that was just like the validity to my, my, I guess, opinion on what I, what I thought social media was at the time. I, I heard some interesting facts about how like when you, you know, you wake up and you have all these thoughts that you're not supposed to have because you're just picking up your phone and you're looking at other people's lives and opinions and, and they make you feel emotions that you wouldn't be feeling at like 8 a.m. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I wanted to just focus on starting my days and living my days just with the emotions and feelings that I would have in my personal life and not really... I don't know, attaching myself to other people's lives just for a little bit. Um, and so far it's, it's been, it's been honestly a breath of fresh air. I can imagine. I'm sure though, it is, have you had like this difficult kind of curve where you, you're, you guys have been on the internet for so long, you're famous from things that you did on the internet. Do you feel like, oh God, I, that's going to slip away? Like, are you worried about some level of fame or, or any of that slipping away or does, or are you just like, no, man, I'm doing me. I, I think I'm for the most part, just doing me. I think of, I guess, fame and having an influence as like something that I don't really hold personally valuable. Like I don't care if, if people like, like think that I'm famous and recognize me for being famous. I, yeah. I just appreciate the voice that it's given me and, and the ability to invoke change and, and things like that. So wow. I'm trying to like figure out that's kind of like the battle that I'm going through in my head is like, I don't want to let it slip away because I still want to be able to make a change, but, hmm. but I just want to make sure that it's like the right thing for me. Cause it also was just like, it became to- toxic to my lifestyle. Like I'm a very private person. Yeah. And, um, there was a lot of things that, that happened that, you know, I, I haven't been able to speak about for one reason or another that, um, that just have like kind of messed with me in my head. And so it's like, it's almost like I'm dealing with trauma when in in that area and I'm just trying to figure out how to navigate around it so that I can still use my voice for good. Yeah. Um, I, and, and stop me, of course, if anything gets too personal or if you don't want to talk about anything. Um, but I actually first found out about you guys when I saw like a news headline about, um, your dad. And uh, I saw like people saying that they were trying to like find the, the location of the, of the funeral service so they could like try and get pictures. And it just, it's, it's so deeply upsetting to me. I had a similar experience when my mom passed away where I, I was terrified of like, fuck is paparazzi going to be there at the fucking funeral? Like I just felt so much like just rage fury at like, I felt so disheartened in humanity. I felt like there was no space to process this event and almost like people wanted to see me like crumble at the event that you naturally crumble because of like, there was no way I wasn't going to crumble. Yeah. At first I want to say, I'm, I'm very sorry to hear about your mom. Um, I heard that she had a really long battle with cancer and I know how terrible that is for an individual in their family. Um, yeah. Uh, and yeah, just with, with the whole funeral situation, it was really scary, honestly, at the time. It was like I was, you know, of course, losing a best friend and then having yeah. to plan for, you know, what was going to have to happen afterwards in, in the funeral service, honestly, while my dad was still alive because, you know, you know, we heard news from hospice and then you know, reality sets in. You're like, hey, I have to be prepared for this funeral, funeral service. I can't have people coming in and taking pictures and, mm-hmm. and all that. So we, we, we right. ended up. A security service beforehand, um, 
which was just it was really morbid in itself and yeah something that yeah was was unfortunate but i, I mean that's what that's what the internet is when you put yourself out there you you're putting yourself out there to everyone everyone has access to the internet so. yeah and so i think that there was um look we were we were defended by by 99.9 percent .9 of our our following like that's were, great not do this, this if is, not all of our following yeah i'm not sure if the people who are trying to come to the funeral for pictures yeah, or they videos. could have just been haters or trolls yeah. or something trying to say something to make us feel you know uncomfortable. sure but sure. um but uh yeah, I think, okay, I think you said it well. I don't know. This is like, this, it's hard for me to talk about because I just don't want to say uh, the wrong thing. I don't want to yeah. say the wrong thing to upset anybody, but. Uh, no, I mean, I get that. Is is that, that I imagine that's something that you guys implement in pretty much everything you talk about is like, because you have such a wide reach and such a large fan base, are you kind of concerned with how you uh, articulate certain things? Do you feel like you can be as free as you'd like to be? Or do you feel somewhat constrained by like all the input yeah that's i don't know if it's constrained it's just i i guess i'm a paranoid person and i'm afraid that people are going to misconstrue what i'm saying hmm. i just i never want to upset anyone um and I, I realize how powerful words are so i'm i'm very careful and then of course it definitely gives me anxiety when i'm speaking for long periods of time on a public platform <laughs> i'm like i just hope i didn't say something that is going to upset someone yeah i feel that too i get terrified that something especially like um people are really right now wanting to for whatever reason like grab a headline about my experience with child acting and i'll say something that's like i think pretty well spoken and articulate and then they'll like take one little nugget like two little words and they'll be like she quits she hates everyone i'll be like okay that's this is ridiculous what are we doing guys like i don't know why they have to like make a thing dramatic i guess it's just for views or whatever but it's annoying yeah. has it affected like your how you feel about podcasting at all um or do you just kind of it's a good question. It, I mean, it's definitely taken more time in the edit because now I'm like very, very, I try to listen with like the shark media ears of like, what can they try and grab? And it's yeah. definitely affected how I edit the episodes. And, and I feel like they've been shorter because I have to cut out. It's probably good. I'm probably cutting out a lot of my just like long winded tangents, but I feel like I have to cut out more to kind of make sure that I'm not, that nothing can be taken out of context. Yeah, It's a little irritating. Frustrated that that's like a responsibility now that you have to like, look at yourself through like someone else's eyes and, and someone who like honestly doesn't have your best interest at heart yeah honestly it's i think it's difficult since it is from the media and there's some people you know some some journalists and things that have been incredibly nice and generous to me and supportive and and that's lovely but but more often than not i find my experience with the media to be that they just want you know a, the views and then the negative kind of lean to a thing whereas like the audience is incredibly understanding and incredibly uh, nuanced in how they perceive things and i don't feel like i've i could possibly misstep with the audience i feel like they're just so um understanding and compassionate and it's it's unfortunate that now it's not even like uh, navigating the audience it's just about navigating the media oh yeah mm -hmm. do you guys feel that with the yeah. media or with the audience or both us it um there is a I, I wouldn't even call them the audience but for us it's like it's not so much the media like we, yeah. we would end up on headlines very often it was more so like like troll accounts and things like that that i guess act as the media i guess you can compare them to how the media kind of bull sharks new age media i guess yeah it is yeah. <laughs> and we even found that with like in public with like paparazzi like we, we don't really have many experiences with paparazzi but we have people that they don't really like us so much that will like come and try to get a photo of us doing something who are these people like what are they it's weird it's like um it's just like an entirely different era i guess it's like because we came up, like I guess, at the beginning of digital media. Yes. And paparazzi, like, wasn't, they just didn't get hip to it, I guess. And, uh, <laughs> but, but like these, like, younger people that were, like, consuming um, social media and stuff like that, like, they took the place of paparazzi for digital creators. It's, right. It's a weird concept. Yeah, it's definitely a completely different world. I'm, and I'm, I'm very intrigued by it, as I, I mean, I think everybody is because it's just like, that's that's where things are going. I think I remember seeing something in like the Hollywood Reporter about like when any kid is asked, like, would they rather be Jennifer Lawrence or, you know, somebody on social media? They don't even they're like, who's Jennifer Lawrence? I don't know who that is. Yeah. Give me the YouTube camera and call it a day. You know, like that's where things are going. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really crazy. Um, and, and like you said, there's like 
these are kids that are trying to make these decisions early on in life. And, you know, they, they don't have the knowledge of, you know, really understanding what they actually want to do with their life. And sometimes when you jump into it, it becomes this insanely long journey that you just can't step away from because it is really addicting to get views and to get mm. people interested in what you're doing. Especially, I remember when I was really young, I would get comments from when I first started getting comments from people that I didn't know personally. I was like, oh my God, like I'm kind of like making friends with people. And you just feel like, I don't know. It's like a sense of popularity, I guess. And, and it gets yes. to people. Uh, but yeah, that's why I feel like it's pretty dangerous for kids to be on social media. Yeah. It's also a career. Path. Everyone knows now that it can be a successful career path because yeah. it's been done. But when we started, like no one had really had a career in social media, yet. maybe like a select number of YouTubers, but they had like high production value and everything like that. We came up as like just user generated content. It's like anyone can do it with their phone. Um, but we wanted to make a career out of it. And the thing about this is that it's just like, you can't have a five-year plan with a career in social media because of the ways that it changes and the different waves that come. Yes. And trends and things like that. Like there, if I'm remembering correctly, there was like a year on social media, I think it was 2017 where drama was like the number one consumed content. Like <laughs> anything that had anything to do with like shitting on someone or just like a negative title yeah. It really clicks and it did so well. And then that died off because I think everyone got tired of it. And then the next year was like a really positive year on social media. The pendulum swing. Yes. Yeah, I guess so. But like, there's no way to really plan for that. When you're looking at it, another job, I guess you can kind of have a ballpark estimate of like how it's going to go for the next five years and like where you want to take it. How has it been for you guys navigating kind of the ups and downs of the internet? Like, can you kind of go into the various phases and what your experience was like with them? Cause it's been, it's been so long now. I think at first we had a really clear idea of what we wanted to be doing on social media when yeah. we, were, we were young, I guess around like 16 years old. And then for the next like three years after that, we kind of just did our own thing. Um, and then, yeah, then I feel like it, the, the ups and downs got a lot more drastic after like 2019, 2020. Um, hmm. I mean, obviously when everyone was just stuck inside, not knowing what to do and really just, psychoanalyzing everyone and everything uh, and then there were so many like yeah fluctuations and like what was hot on social media and we we at that point really kind of tried to jump on like, the bandwagon and follow along just because like i was i wasn't sure if we were doing anything that was interesting enough for people to be watching so i was like okay let's just do the interesting thing um so yeah we definitely fell victim to that um wow. and, yeah i feel like that was like the worst rep representation of, of ourselves at this the time. is 2019 yeah, 2020 probably. 2020, I think. Yeah. yeah. And what what can you explain what what that looked like? What those kinds of what that content was like? Yeah. Um it, it's really like embarrassing stuff, but we decided to like kind of blog everything in our entire lives. And okay. you're, I guess, 20 years old and, and really trying to figure out who you are. Um it just wasn't the, the greatest time to be doing that. And it, yeah, it was it was just really humiliating. So we deleted everything. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. It was just like, I feel like social media progressively got more exploitative as time went on. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, everyone, like if you weren't showing like the inside of your bathroom, then people didn't care about you. You know what I mean? You have to show yeah. it. There was a yeah. point where you, it came where you had to show everything. I think as some people started to push the envelope and, and talk about like, I don't know, um, their, their relationships or um, failed friendships or just things that were really juicy and dramatic that people were like, oh, I, I want to, you know view this um as more and more people did that the content that wasn't that became a little bit more boring and, and less edgy mm -hmm. so i guess mm -hmm. we try to keep up and we're not really those types of people we don't really like drama and we don't like to um let people in too close in our lives i, I have a hard time like creating trust worthy uh, finding trustworthy people to have friendships with and everything like that so mm -hmm. i guess i'm like a, a pretty guarded person at first um, and then I completely just strayed away from who I was and, and, and just did whatever social media wanted me to do. Um, and it was also like a really weird time in our lives. It was pretty bad timing. We, we kind of had like, I guess looking back on it now, pretty severe eating disorders and it just really messed with our heads. And, uh, both really, of you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was really, I was really, uh, wow. unconfident and I hit an all time low and, uh, that's when I decided to just show the most of my life that I had ever mm. shown. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a, it's, it's weird. I don't know. I feel like, 
that's that's one of the things that I, I regret doing. The other things that I've done on social media, I don't really regret so much. Um, the ups and downs were just like you kind of you kind of just figured them out, and they they weren't really that deep. But I feel like as we got older, they got a little bit deeper because I felt uh, more of a responsibility over the things that I was putting out, mm-hmm. and now a great responsibility for the things I put out, and and some of them were not so great, and and not like you can said good a good representation of who I am. Mm-hmm. Um, but what can you do? I mean, you make mistakes and you live and learn. And that's, uh, that's life. It's just weird that it's public. I so agree. And that's something, that's definitely something that I still struggle uh, with is like just sort of the ghosts of my past and being haunted or humiliated by uh, certain things. And I'm just like, oh, I wish I could just wipe this clean. Um, but to your point, that's not how it goes. And uh, if you have any tips for me, that would be greatly appreciated because it's, it's not easy. So do you, do you have... Cause you, when did you get in front of the camera? Like I was six when I started acting, I was a little bean. Yeah. I like don't have memories of a time in my life when I wasn't acting. Really? Wow. And so does some of that like still bother you? Yeah. I mean, it, because my, because it was sort of a thing that I did to please my mom and wasn't, it wasn't self, it wasn't a self-driven thing for me. Um, I just feel like I kind of didn't have uh, I didn't really fully live my childhood. Like I didn't have, I think that it's really important for kids and, and teenagers, honestly, also even young adults to have that space to grow and develop. And especially up to, I think your brain like fully develops at 25 or something like that. And it's like to have that time where you can just explore yourself and make mistakes without having input from the world, I think is so important. And I kind of just felt like I had an unlived childhood that then I was left with when I like, when I quit acting and I was like, oh, well, I guess I'm kind of just like a six-year-old inside because I didn't have all those years. So let's see how this goes. And it did not go well. And it was not a fun uh, phase of my life, but I do think it was really important so that I could have some semblance of like a legitimate identity, or I just would have been a shadow of a person, like mm-hmm. an absolute shadow of a person. <laughs> it's yeah. pretty creepy. Was the thought of turning away from acting and, and finding yourself off camera and doing your own thing, what, was that intimidating at first? Like you felt like you were going to give it up as well? Yes. Well, I felt like, oh God, this is all going to slip away. And these are things that people tell me that I should want. Fame and money and all that is like a thing that everybody says like, oh, you're so lucky. And am I absolutely crazy to walk away from this? Is this going to be the biggest regret of my life? Also, everybody around me is telling me that I'd be crazy to walk away from this. So there's nobody who's really saying like, hey, you know, do what's best for your mental health. There wasn't really that advocate other than my therapist. Um, God bless her. Thank you, Aaron. Um, so it was like this, this really difficult decision to make. And it took months of back and forth. And I felt like I was just kind of like uh, trying to tiptoe around it and try. And I'd be like, well, maybe I'll just like do this one thing or maybe I'll do this one thing. When really inside what I wanted was just like, No, you need to quit. You have to stop. You're not going to be okay if you keep going. Doesn't matter how many other people are weighing in on this. Finally, once I did that um, was when I really started to see like tangible changes and and improvements in my mental health. And now I think it was absolutely the right decision. Um, But but it was not easy to come to it for sure. Yeah, I definitely feel you on that. It's been, it it was definitely one of the most scary conversations that I've had with Grayson. Mm when we were like okay this is gonna get bad if we don't stop and it wasn't like and and then that's when we were like doing the podcast and everything okay well we can hold on to here and and you know do a little bit here pop in every once in a while there and i was like i really don't think that we're going to figure out who we are unless we're living for ourselves only um and I, i knew it would take time as well we can't just do it for like a week and then get back to it uh you don't figure out who you are within just a week so right I feel like now I'm really starting to make improvements on my mental health. Um, That's great. And, and figure out what I really like to do myself. Yeah, I think we, we can definitely relate to you. Um, we, we left school at just after we turned 15. So I, I, I have like a month of, of high school. Um, but I, I would say I think the last time I was in school was eighth grade. So from there, we moved to LA and, and we got our own apartment. It was just us two. And then every single day we woke up, worked, went to sleep, woke up, worked, went to sleep. And when you were 15? Yeah. Cause we, we had this like weekly thing on YouTube to keep going and we never wanted to miss a, a Tuesday. That's the day we used to post on. And then mm. um, you know, all the other social media platforms that we wanted to keep up to date and stuff. That was like 
hard work. I'm not going <laughs> to, not going to sell it short. It was, it was hard work. It's like, it's weird how, how ideal YouTube being a YouTuber seems, but like once you actually do it and it's, it's, it's really hard work and it can be a uh, very mentally draining. Um, but I'd that, say even more so now than it was back then, it was, it was much easier back then when we did it. Mm -hmm. I, I feel bad for the, the young people that are getting into it nowadays, just because social media has become so much more of an exploitative place and you really have to forfeit all of your privacy in, in exchange for views, which are not tangible and are they really valuable? Mm -hmm. um, and I feel yes. like they're becoming less and less valuable because they're, there's more and more people on these platforms and you're viewed less at, you're viewed as a little bit, you know, maybe less important now than, than people were back then by brands and people who want to pay you money because they can just go to someone else because there's so many people doing it. And it's just, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of people who like, even these platforms themselves, it's like they're kind of stripping sanity from young people in exchange for like screen time and, and, and monetary gain. Yes. So, yeah. We're just, I don't know. But yeah, I do feel like I entered like a, like a time warp from I think 14 to like about 20 years old. And then I came out and I'm like, Whoa, I'm like, I'm Grayson again. I feel like, I feel like myself and I'm going to start exploring the things that, that truly matter to me. Like I was doing the thing where I was getting expensive clothes and, and driving a cool car and things like that, that I thought it, I, I think like the whole time I was just trying to convince myself that that's what I truly wanted for myself. Mm. Um, but it was, it was really just so that, you could look cool. Other I could uphold this yeah. like famous reputation and, and like look cool for other people, but it, it didn't actually matter to me. And I, I didn't feel like myself sitting in that car, you know? Yeah. And uh, since I've taken a step back and, and regained my privacy and, and started to explore the things that I actually personally care about, um, I have, uh, I've made a lot of changes in that area of my life and I, I feel so much better. That's, that's phenomenal. Was with the, with the like cars and the, and the, clothes um was that sort of was your social group also incorporating those things in their life so there was some element of like oh i got to keep up with my social group or was it not so much about that and just something that was like oh well, i guess i should do this because i'm famous and i'm you know I whatever so. I, think, I think our industry was doing that a lot like other people yeah. on social media were doing a lot of that and i think there was some sort of reward or praise for it as well that mm -hmm. you get online that would feel good as a young person you think that you're you're cool i mean everybody wants to be cool. Um, so it was just that. And then also, you know, if, if everybody else was doing it, you don't want to be the one person to not be doing it because then you don't fit in as much. And um, so yeah, that's, that was a big part of it as well. It was kind of like a cliche at the time. You yeah. just like get like a cool car and get it wrapped and get, get cool rims on it. And uh, I don't know, just little things like that. I realized that I, I think are just so like kind of silly. And now that I've uh, figured out who I really am <laughs> or what yeah. I'm mean. Yeah. Um, you guys, you, you mentioned earlier, sort of everybody feeling like they have kind of, they're a little bit entitled to like your identity in some sense. You, you phrased it better than that, but it was something along those lines. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah. When, when he said that he felt that people had equity in our lives, I, yes. I yeah, I felt like, yeah. Um, I, I mean, all of our, our viewers and supporters are, are definitely responsible for uh, a lot of the success that we've had on, on social media in our sure. lives. We're greatly appreciative appreciative of them for you know all of that and also just for the support that they've they've given us. Um, and it's just like when 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 you I guess formed a relationship with someone at such a young age and then you've grown with them and you don't really even necessarily know each other but you you just met online. Yeah. Uh, I feel like they because they were you know responsible for um, everything that we were our success. I, I feel like they probably thought they were responsible for other decisions that we made in our lives too, like who we were going to be friends with and who we want to have relationships with. And, sure. um, and, and I don't blame them. We're all kids and we're all trying to figure out like what life is. And, mm -hmm. and there's, mm -hmm. really, you know, there's no like rule book to, to the, the social media thing. It's so new. And um, yeah, it was just, it was, I guess it was just, I don't know. I don't know if there's any more to say about it besides that, mm -hmm. but I think a lot of it can just be attributed to being young and, and yeah. learning and, and just having relationships and like the relationship that, that a creator has with their viewers and, and vice versa. Like, yeah, it's still like a young relationship where, where people are learning about how to navigate any sort of personal relationships that they have in life. And, uh, there's, there's ways that can be damaging emotionally and, and you just learn as you go. But uh, yeah. And, and 
I wouldn't say it was like the. It definitely was not the majority of our supporters, like yeah, at all by any means. But there were there were things that I would see that would kind of just like, in other words, say like, why aren't you showing me this? Because I got you to where you are. You know what I mean? And yeah. It's, well, because like I, I can't because I mean, there's other reasons too. Like we've had like extreme breaches of, of security and privacy before that have like scarred me for the rest of my life. Yes. And about it, but you know, like it, it was handled by law and um, mm. scary, really, really scary shit. And, okay. uh, and that's like also traumatized me into not really wanting to share a lot of my life. Um, but then the other people that were supporting me, I couldn't tell that to. Um, and I can't say much more than I am right now. Sure. But um, I just couldn't really find a balance there because I, I literally legally wasn't allowed to either. So. I hear you. I, you know, I think this is such a, such a complicated and nuanced area that is really difficult for people to understand, especially young people who I get where they're coming from of thinking like, well, but I'm a fan. So therefore I should have blank access to this person's every move. And that means I'm showing how much I love them. And I can kind of like, I guess, understand it, but I do, I am biased and I see it more from my point of view because it's what I'm, what I've lived in. Um, and I guess I feel like my experience was different from yours in the sense that it wasn't, uh, that I really started to like resent fame and resent um, and resent the people who would approach me for, because it w- I was on a kid's show and I felt really ashamed about that. And, you know, I had really intense eating disorders and my character was known for eating food. So people yeah. would, would literally just shout. Like also I feel like the reactions, there were some people who were incredibly nice and gracious and lovely, plenty of them, but there were also plenty of people who would, you know, just grab my arm really intensely you know, aggressive mom types who just kind of grab the arm, get the picture with their kid. And, um, and I felt like, I don't know, I did feel like, oh, every time I leave the house, everybody feels like they deserve a piece of me. And I just want to get a coffee. Like, I just want to have some time with my, you know, I, I remember one time when I was pushing my mom's wheelchair in Disneyland, my literally bald mom's wheelchair and just hordes of people just like, please take a picture, like screaming. And I, I just felt like this is this something has to give. Like I don't know how to have this conversation when I feel like if I were to express these things, everybody would hate me. Yet it's something that I feel so intensely about, and I feel like is a conversation that needs to be have had because I think it puts young people in the spotlight in danger. And I think it's it's really um, it's really detrimental. And I don't know how to move things forward or how to have that conversation. But it's like. It, I just, I really worry about, about young people who are famous and, and I, I want everyone to be as healthy as they can. And it's concerning to me that it's difficult to, to be that. Likewise. Yeah. I, I, I really fear for young people on social media because especially those who have larger platforms, because there's, you know, everything that's going with cancel culture nowadays where, oh, just froze. Sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah you're good. Can you guys uh, hear me? Apache really. You froze. Oh my gosh. What if I open the door? Do you think it would? I don't think so. I need the Wi Fi router. Oh, there you are. You see Sorry. Me? Oh, fuck. He froze again. Honestly, fear for younger people on social media who are in the spotlight because with cancel culture uh, and everything being so rampant right now, there's obviously very little room to be human that's left. It's like if you mess up and, and do one little thing in your adolescence, then your entire life is a write off. And I feel yes. like, especially like, I just know how much I associated my self-worth with what the internet thought about me growing up. And mm. I could only imagine if cancel culture was as predominant as it is now back then, if, if people were trying to cancel me and tell me that I was this type of person because I made this one mistake, I would probably be convinced that the rest of my life was like a write-off and I was a terrible human. So I just, I fear that these, these little mess ups in people's lives are, they're going to, tr- define themselves by them and I, I just i feel terrible and a lot of times it's it's unreasonable like i've been seeing so many headlines of, of young tiktokers like getting shamed for certain things that they've done and it's just it's just so unreasonable it's like mm. they're not doing anything different than every other 17 year old out there right now and i'm sure everybody who's writing these articles knows that they've done the same things in their lives too mm-hmm. it's like so is everyone just going to act like they're perfect and just try to <laughs> some people for doing things that they've done themselves you know and um I don't know. And, and then what is, what is someone in that position left to think about fame? Like, are they not meant to resent it? You know what I mean? Like it's, it's hard. I, I, I was walking down the street with my friend exploring a new city 
And yeah. someone came up to me and grabbed me by both of my shoulders and screamed like, ah, and screamed in my face. And I, I didn't really appreciate the encounter. So I like yeah. continued to walk and I was also like, like I had to, I was getting picked up by a car with like the group that I was with. Yeah. Um, I had to get to this place in a certain time. And um, I continued to walk. I said, hello. And I just continued to walk. And then they were like, are you fucking kidding me? You're not going to stop while wow, you're such an asshole. And it's like, I, I don't know in that situation what I'm supposed to do. Mm. Like I, yeah. I am someone who is very grateful for all of the support and attention that I've received online. But in that situation, like I'm also still a human, like, and, and I don't think that any human should be treated that way. And so like, it would be against my character to stop and to, to just allow someone to treat me like that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then I was just like yelled at and, and called an asshole for not stopping because it, it's, it's kind of like, I guess what I was thought, it, it, it was thought to be like an obligation that I need to stop because right. that was an example of someone, I think, thinking that they like owned a, a piece of me. A hundred percent. Yeah. I've been called a bit, I've been shouted at as a bitch more times than I, than I uh, care to recall. But yeah. I'm curious too, if, if you guys in doing even, uh, how long did you do the podcast for? We did the podcast for, I think, a year, but I, okay. I think it was on camera because we did it off camera, just audio only, which was honestly a lot less stressful, I, I think. Um, I guess it lived on a platform like that wasn't YouTube, and we knew how like the YouTube comment section worked and everything like that. Right. But then we went to YouTube, and then I think we did it for, like, what, five months, six months? Yeah, something like that. So it was like over a year total. I think we did like 55 episodes, which is like over a year's worth. Got it. I'm I'm sort of curious how if, if the encounters with your fans changed during that, because I've noticed... So I was just completely signed off social media for a couple of years. And then it, while I was like trying to get my shit together and kind of figure out uh, who I was and what I wanted to say and how I wanted to say it. And once I started, once I like started talking about things that actually mattered to me and started, I, I literally had the mindset of like, okay, if everybody goes away, but five people, at least I'm going to have a genuine connection with those five people. And I have to trust that that's going to be okay. And that's going to you know, make more of a difference. And trusting that was, has definitely not been easy. And there's been plenty of self-doubt that's come along with it. But I have noticed like now people that approach me, they, it's a different kind of person. I feel like, oh my God, I feel a connection with them. The things that they say, I mean, I have chills right now. Like the thing I met this, you know, girl the other day named Riley in a salt and straw who like told me that the, the podcast helped her grow and changed her life. And it like, it's a different type of response than, Hey, where's the fried chicken? Like it's much more heartwarming. It's much more encouraging. And I feel like, um, I feel like things are resonating with the people they're supposed to resonate with. And there's a lot of hope in that. So I'm curious if you guys have had that experience as you've have explored projects that have meant something to you in a, in a deeper way, um, how that's kind of transformed your encounters with fans. Definitely. I think there's been a mix. I think there's been like a lot of really refreshing encounters. Um, mm. as many times as I, get someone grabbing my shoulders and, and doing something like that and, and demanding a picture. Um, I have people come up and they say that they've learned something through my, my podcast or, or a video yeah. that you, or documentary or, or whatnot. Um, and I, and I really appreciate that stuff. And that happens a, a lot of times. And, and it's uh, part of the reason why I did what I did for so long. And, and I'm, sh- I will continue to do what I do. I just got to figure out how, how I'm going to do that. Like how it makes sense for me personally. Um, yeah. So I'm not, I'm not really in a rush to like, to get back in front of the camera at all. Um, but I, I do want to continue to make things that can be seen and received by people to hopefully spread a good message. Mm. Uh, I, do, I do appreciate those encounters so much. Yeah. Can can we talk about a little bit of like what you guys want to focus on now and where you're at and and the kinds of things you're you're sorting through nowadays? Yeah, yeah. sure. I mean, right now, like we're um, we're kind of working in silence, and um, it's been the first time that we've ever done that because in the past, as soon as we work on something, like the whole deal was to like promote it on social media and let everybody know about it. Um, but what we're working on now is like, we haven't really even told our mom about it at all. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know when we're going to be ready to like publicly speak about it. It's been, it's been, I can say that it's been like just such a a joy learning something new, um, and something that I'm, I'm just extremely passionate about and, and being able to get up and work on it, uh, almost every day now. And, um, yeah, it's been great. And uh, in the time that I'm not working, I've been like exploring new hobbies and things like that. I think I just like, I have a, a real love for art in all, in all forms. Hmm. Um, it, it was video creating from the time I was 
like five years old when my sister got a flip video camera. We started making videos and showing our family members. And then when they would smile, it would like just give me so much juice to go and make another video. Yeah. And then it carried on. And that's what we did for, for our, became our career. Fortunately, we were fortunate enough to be able to do that. Um, but I think that when it became our career, it took a little bit of like the, the magic away from it because we started to have to abide by this system that like mm. was views so that we can continue to make it and like continue for it to be a career. Um, because like if you just make videos that you want to sometimes like not everyone wants to see that and then you can't continue to make videos because you don't make any money and then you can't make any more videos. <laughs> it was kind of like we were chasing our tail there. Like, okay, what can we make that, that will also like allow us to continue to make videos? Um, and uh, that was, we found the balance there and, and then other things happened and stuff like that we, we said. Um, but on the side, I've been building a lot. And I feel like that's, that's like, has become like an, an a creative outlet for me that I never wish to be paid to do. Building? Um, yeah, building. Like, yeah, we've both been doing that a lot. Mm -hmm. We built a gazebo on our hillside and we built... Um, a gazebo? Yeah, yeah. That was a big... Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Okay. When you say building, I figured it'd be like, so then I built like, I don't know, a jewelry box, like a plate. You literally built a gazebo. Yeah. It's that's uh, insane. That's the congratulations. That must feel like such an accomplishment. It's nine and a half by 10 feet. And oh my God. I guess the dopamine flowing for sure. <laughs> you just built, like, it, was in. it was a lot of fun. Uh, and then like right now I'm building something for my sister. Mm -hmm. uh, place and, and just things like that. They like really give back to my soul and they're rewarding. And, um, I don't know. That's a, something I would suggest to anybody is to just do something. Just like, quit everything and build this no, no. for free. <laughs> <laughs> no, to, to have an outlet, um, like whether it's like writing or it, even if you're not creative, it's just like doing fun math problems. I don't know like if that's what you have the most fun doing. Just do something that gives back to you and, and just never think about getting paid for it and just do it for fun and just find a hobby. I think maybe just, maybe it boils down to just finding a, a good hobby. I agree with you. I also, I do think that, that being, it's so difficult to, I guess, not be m motivated by money. And I also recognize like the privilege in saying that if you, if there's any sort of financial stability in your um, life, but I do feel like being motivated by money is just, I mean, we all know, we all hear that it's like a recipe for disaster, but it's, it gets ugly so fast yeah. and it leads to like, I think the most inauthenticity imaginable like i don't think it's possible to be more inauthentic than when it's like oh i gotta keep making the money and like keeping up the standard of however much i made last year or like whatever it is i just it's like yikes yeah because yeah. there's always a way to to make more money faster and it's normally not the the most respectful way um and then you just end up doing it and uh and then you start to lose respect for yourself so yeah, yeah. i totally understand that. my grandma called me out for that uh, i think that that oh, also came an issue on social media like um, yeah, it became a thing of like, how do we continue to do as well as we did the previous years and, and stuff like that. And we started to think about money a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. um, when, when, like when we began YouTube, we didn't even get paid for the first year. Like, I, I don't think we turned on, I don't think I figured out how to turn on monetization until we had over a million subscribers. So like that wasn't, that wasn't our focus. It was just like making videos and having fun. And that's when yeah. it was the most fun. And that was when it was the most fun. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the more of a, business it became the, the less fun it got so i think that i don't yeah. want to like discourage people but there's definitely a way to mm -hmm. to have fun in yeah business. but i think it's just it's just keeping that passion and keeping the fire burning and and not um just not just focusing on money only yeah i hear you i'm also curious um growing not only growing up in the public eye but also growing in the public eye like, I feel like we've touched on a little bit, but I'd love to go further into like how you like, do you, I guess, do you feel that it's necessary to completely step away from the public eye in order to grow at a certain point? Or do you think that it is possible to kind of keep growing and be in the public eye at a young age? I think for different people, there's, you know, there are different remedies for growing and, and self-growth. And I mm. think for us personally, we just can't grow in the public eye. Just, I think I value people's opinions. Um, Sometimes more than I'd like to, even if I really, truly feel like it's just someone trolling, I just, for some reason, find myself listening to them and I, I don't want them to be right. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just really stepped away to think, okay, if I'm not sharing my life with anybody at all, what would I actually find joy doing? And 
that's why I really need to be off of social media while I'm finding myself. Also, I'm, I'm really passionate about um, trying to use my life to make a positive change on this planet. And yeah. I really want to make sure that I don't uh, end up doing something that's counterproductive. And then I have to, you know, just uh, retrace my steps and do it, do it better when I could just start and, and, and do it the best I possibly can. So I, I think I have to just really collect my thoughts and um, become more articulate and really figure out what I'm passionate about. And then from that, I'll be able to, to do it without um, messing up as much. <laughs> have, you, have you both found that you're like passionate about similar things? You both love the building. It sounds like. Yeah. We, our whole life. It's been like that. We've done everything together. Um, and it's always like if, if Grayson does something that I'm not able to do yet, I do it like the next hour or vice versa, just because we, we see someone who looks exactly like us has the same capabilities. And then, we're like, okay, well, I guess I, uh, I have to do this. Yeah, it's, it's a so. weird twin dynamic. We were even yeah. able to walk at like a, a really freakishly young age. Um, we were like running at 11 months. And, and it was just because one was stood up and then it was proof that the other one could do it. And then one took a step and then it was proof that mm. the other one could do it. And so we would just push ourselves. And it's, it's always been like that for our entire lives and everything we do. So I guess it's just like a competitive thing too. Yeah. But it's like, if, if this guy with the same DNA as me can do this, then why can't I? You know, totally. So, so we, we always put ourselves there and, and it's like, it's also like companionship. Um, like if we're doing something and we're giving it our all, it's nice to have like someone to do it with because you can kind of go crazy losing yourself in, in something that you're really passionate about. And then it's like sure. validation. Like if I think that I did something that was pretty cool or uh, I would show Grayson and be like, Hey, do you think this is cool? And if he said yes, then I was confident in it. And if he said no, then I'd probably retry. So I, I feel mm -hmm. like I need him there for validation. Definitely. Um, Ethan, Ethan, you mentioned sort of wanting to have a, or make a positive impact with your life. And I'm curious, I'm always curious how a person defines like what a positive impact is or how you get to the root of it, because I feel like it can be such a broad area and how different people interpret what a positive impact is can look really different person to person. So like, what does it look like? Well, for each of you. Yeah. I think for me personally, I just had a lot of time to sit back and um, find out what I felt was like disturbing or something that made me angry about this mm. world and the way that it works. And then, you know, try to change that. Um, yes. To the best of my abilities. And uh, one of those things has been just environmentalism and how people treat the planet. And I feel that like we could do a better job at that. And also the way we treat animals and we treat other humans. Mm. Um, I know that sounds like a, a lot of, a lot of stuff, but that's why I really want to take my time to, to think about how I can, Sure. Projects that maybe, you know, evoke conversation or, you know, and then maybe lead to change. So, um, yeah, those are like the, the three main things. I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's like, that, that's, yeah, I'm, I'm with Ethan on all of those working together on, on how we can like approach making positive change in all those areas. Luckily, we pretty much have the same opinion on everything. So yeah. Yeah. Have someone to help me and he has someone to help him. That helps too. But they're, they're huge issues. They're global issues. And it's like, creating that that plan of, of approach is like is something that should be well thought through and, and take some time on so that's that's why we wanted to like not jump the gun and just speak about everything on the podcast when we didn't have our thoughts collected and, and maybe yeah, i just didn't want to approach it in the wrong way yeah <laughs> yeah that's really uh, admirable if, if you guys are comfortable wrapping up with uh, one question i i just would love to know um what advice you would give to your younger selves um, in terms of being in the public eye, navigating that, um, what if you could just like look back? If you could tell yourself anything, what would it? What would it be? That's a, that's a good question. I still feel like I'm struggling to honestly understand what I should be telling myself now. Um, <laughs> so I and I'm still figuring that out. But for my younger self, I would say just really do your own thing because you'll attract people who are interested in what you do. And then you know, that's how friendships are made. That's how relationships are made. Um, and on, on the internet, you have a lot of people in your life that, that maybe you would never meet before. So mm -hmm. you want to make sure that you're, you know, surrounding yourself with the like-minded ones. Mm -hmm. And I would say, focus on what's in front of you and focus on, on being grateful for what you have in that moment. And, mm -hmm. and like always just, like want and, and feel like you need more than what you have. Like I, I feel like at a, there was a time where we were like chasing getting our subscriber count up and, and doing things like that. But um, I think a, a good piece of advice at that time would have been a good sentence to wrap it up would be 
you don't need as much as you think you do. A hundred percent. Um, this conversation has been so fulfilling. I am just such a fan of you guys. I'm really excited to see where, whenever you, you kind of come out again with stuff, I'm really excited to see what you do. I think it's going to be really special. And I, and I definitely, uh, deeply admire that you're taking the time and the space that you need to make sure that, um, you're saying things that you want to say when you say them again. Thank you so much. Thanks. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate this conversation. I, I enjoyed it. A lot and um, looking forward to, to listening to your podcast in the future. Yeah. I feel <laughs> so much just having this conversation. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank Bye. you. All righty. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.